We'll also place it over the word meta. Since meta is not centered, we will need to pick it up and center it within our area. We now set our background color to match that of our boundary and pick up the word meta as a brush. The background color, which is now green, is transparent, meaning that black becomes part of the brush. We copy it to the spare and do the same with morph. Now we can use the metamorph feature to dissolve between these two brushes, both with solid black backgrounds. As you can see, this creates more of a dissolve effect. Let's stamp it on our animation so you can compare. Stamp down the first one, choose Move, and Draw. You can see the drastic difference. For our final step, we'll pick up the word Meta once again as a brush, still having green as our transparent background color, and copy it to Spare. Since we want the word Meta to fade to black, we'll pick up an empty black square. Once again, we choose Morph from the Brush menu. However, we need to set the number of cells this time to 10, since we want it to fade from Meta to black in half as many frames. We'll go back to the animation and stamp the first half down. As before, we'll use the Move Requester, this time setting the count to 10. Morph has now faded to black. Now for the second part, we pick up the black square, have that become our spare brush, pick up the word Morph, and perform the metamorph function. Ten frames is still correct. We now see a fade from black to the word Morph. We'll stamp this anim brush down on the 11th frame of our animation and use the Move Requester once again to complete it. We see the word Morph fade from black. When we play this back in ping pong fashion, you can see the three types of metamorphing that can be accomplished. While we have used text, any objects will work. While Deluxe Paint 4 is a great tool for the artist, it is also useful in creating charts and graphs. By combining different tools, most anyone can create business graphics. We will demonstrate two graphs, both using low resolution, half bright mode. We'll begin with a bar graph. With grid turned on, we create vertical and horizontal lines to place our graph within. From the line spacing requester, choose end total, 20. Drag a line vertically up along the left hand edge and pick it up as a brush. Once again, bring up the line spacing requester and choose continuous. Drag a short line to add vertical tick marks to your graph. Next, choose a color for the top of each bar. Using the Polygon tool, create a diamond shape. You must be careful not to make the diamond too large, since there will need to be several of them to make the chart. Next, choose the color that is to appear as the front face of each bar. Using the Line tool, draw a line across the bottom edge of the polygon shape. Then choose the color that will be used on the bar's right side. Use the Line tool once again to highlight the right edge of the polygon. Now pick up the diamond shape as a brush. 
bring up the line spacing requester and set n total to 4, representing the 4 bars that we will be adding. Turn grid off and drag a line from the bottom position of the first bar to the bottom position of the last bar. Bring up line spacing once again and turn on continuous. Position the brush at the first location and drag it up. Do this with each location, creating each bar to the appropriate height. This must be one of the quickest ways to create a bar chart. Add text as appropriate, being careful to position everything exactly as needed. Add a pretty background, and it's done. Oh, and one last thing, don't forget the title. For our next chart, we'll create a pie chart. We'll begin by choosing ellipse and set spacing to 20. Turn on grid and create the top surface of our pie. These marks will be used so we can measure out equal proportions. We'll use the line tool with continuous set and starting at the center position the marks around our pie. For our example, we'll want six portions. Now that we have our pie properly portioned, we can use continuous line ellipse to outline it. We'll use the fill tool and different colors from our palette to fill each piece. We'll choose Stencil Make from the Effects menu and choose the color that was used to create the outline and invert it. When we clear the screen, the gray is removed. We'll clear the old stencil and make a new stencil of the red so we can pull that piece out. When we pick it up as a brush, we're able to remove only the red piece. We clear the stencil and stamp down the pie piece somewhat pulled out. We'll now pick up the entire pie as a brush. Next we select the line tool and draw using grid a short line on the screen of our pie. We now bring up the fill type and choose H bright. We'll stretch our rectangle over our image to make it darker, restore our original brush and stamp it down. We now go to the spare page and create a spread fill of light gray to dark gray. We choose H bright and use our brush to create a shadow. We pick up our entire pie, stamp it over our background, and things are starting to come to shape. We simply add a title and values to each pie piece and it's finished. In this section we will show you two quick tips that you may find useful. Usually when you run Deluxe Paint you have to go through setting things up to suit your needs. First is the screen selector, where you must set the resolution, number of colors, and overscan settings. Next, you may want to make changes to the press menu, such as turning on B-square, or coordinates. Then, most likely, you'll want to make changes to the palette. All of this can be rather time-consuming, 